Beloved, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour, a little bit of a setup. I have been a student of efficiency when it comes to setting up a shop. I've looked at um, places that uh, really need to make to maximize or to make do with a small space, i.e. submarines. I, look at, I looked at submarine galleries, drawn on my own experience. But one thing that really that I saw that I really thought was nice was professional race teams, especially like dirt bikes, the KTM teams, how they set up their shop and their work areas for maximum efficiency, where you can have everything at your fingertips in a very small space. So I'm getting ready to, as I'm convalescing from the world's worst flu, week three, I'm back out in the shop. I've got a project on Jack's bike and I was just getting everything set up. What I've tried to do is to make it modular, meaning that I don't lock myself into anything. If I need to work on a big truck, or a piece of equipment or something small, uh, a watch or motorcycle, where I can make my space work super efficiently without a whole bunch of setup and tear down. So I'm gonna show you how I set up for working on, I got Jack's snow bike, I gotta put some bars and th some things on. I'll show you in real IRL how I set it up to get ready for a project. The hearth of the wood stove is the heart of the home or the heart of the shop, especially when it's cold outside. Unless you like to work out in the cold with frozen hands, I don't, so it all, works around that. My main bench has a vise, a wood bench, a metal bench, uh, and then a built-in toolbox. So that's kind of where I start. I want to work by the stove, not too close where I overheat, but close enough where I can enjoy the benefits of it. So I start with uh, a shop carpet. A small sharp carpet, race carpet, is very nice to have because anything you drop on it, it keeps it from flying away. When a bolt or a nut drops here, usually it stays put right here and it's just warmer and nicer to stand on. Next up, I'm gonna start building the work triangles, they call it. This is a familiar term in design of kitchens, commercial kitchens. And what it is, is that the things that you get at the most, toolbox, workbench, vice, whatever that may be, are all in a triangle. So in your central area, you're one or two steps to each thing. That way you're not running across the shop back and forth and you, I start building around this. Now I've got all my drawers, all the tools that I own are right here. I can easily access it and I've got lots of work surfaces. I've got a rubber surface here, I've got a metal surface here, and then a warm wood surface here to work on. The next thing I'm gonna place is, this is a Rubbermaid janitorial cart. This was the cart that I used to use in my Jeep parts business for pulling parts. It's a little bit big, but actually it's turned out very nice. So what the, what's gonna be on here is anything that comes off of what I'm working on, fenders, gas tanks, or all of the pieces, parts and pieces that I'm gonna be put on, I keep it right here organized. So I know it comes off of the machine, it goes right in here, and it goes right back. I don't have to worry about cluttering up my workspaces Everything stays there, and if I can't get to it for a day or two, it needs to sit for a week. I don't have things getting lost or moved around. The next thing I'm gonna place is gonna be my race cart. The race cart's gonna have all of my shop towels, uh, lubricants, and some specialty tools, grease, and that sort of thing. Here's the panoramic. You can see that work triangle starting to be built. Tools, materials off the bike, race cart, and that sort of thing. And the final thing I'm gonna put is going to be a garbage can. Garbage can's also gonna be kept on wheels. Everything, you see a pattern here, everything is gonna be on wheels so I can move it. It's modular, I can work over there, I can work here. And th these Rubbermaid, I bought this at a commercial restaurant supply place, these Rubbermaid, I I've had it for 20 years. These Rubbermaid garbage cans with the roll around are nice. If you don't have a garbage can, then your, you, all your packing material and everything ends up on your work surfaces. And you wanna keep those clear so you can actually work and, and pay attention to what you're doing and not have a bunch of clutter and knocking stuff off on the floor. Now we're ready to bring our project or whatever it is that we're working on over. Now you can see the work triangle. This is what you're working on, whatever it is. There's also, there's room, actually with this, there's room for 
two bikes in this workspace. Uh, th in the summertime when the warband comes over, sometimes we'll have two and even three bikes. I can always push this out a little bit and everyone can, can work without getting on top of one another. That, right here, I'm only a step away, just to turn a step away from my tools, from my parts, and from my chemicals. If I need to get access to more some of the shop tools in here, or a nice clean workbench, or even the vise, it's very simple. And as you very well know, Proho is jack of all trades and master of none, so always you have to have access to YouTube so you can learn how to fix what you just tore up. So having your computer or laptop or computer station that where you can, without frustration, simply go over and research information or even a lot of like when you buy a new KTM, they don't come with manuals anymore. So everything is online. So having a computer or a good computer station where you can sit down uh, is super, super handy. Have, have a, a bar stool or a shop tool. I recently got this Viper, uh, this Viper chair. I, I thought it was a little bit maybe overpriced, a little bit much for a shop, but I can tell you after using it, and I use it all day, every day, it's one of the best things I've ever bought. Highly, highly recommended. Having the wheels and the casters and the adjustability is very, very nice. So I, I come up here and I got a place to sit down. I can roll over. I can, if I get tired throughout the day, I can lean on this a little bit and just, just take a load off. So having the Viper chair is it, it's really, it, I would consider it an important tool in your shop. Uh, under here, I keep a small stool. It's going to be for most of the things you're going to work on, get you closer to the ground. The, the Viper chair is nice, but it's tall. That's more for work up on the bench, where this is going to be for when you're getting down, you're working on brakes. or These little tools, or these little bitches, or these uh, stools are nice. You can adjust them up and down. You got the good casters on them. They've got a tray in the bottom where you can keep bits and uh, tools, bits and nuts and bolts, and that sort of thing. This is an essential item too. Just a, a nice roller, a little roller stool. Lighting is also super, super important. I learned the importance of lighting when I was doing auto body. Now this is not something you're going to have. I, I make YouTube videos, so I'm going to have, I'm going to have a need for lighting. So this is kind of a fringe benefit of that. But this is the perfect setup right here. It's a, a Matthews. Matthews is a company in California that makes a lot of Hollywood studio grip. Very high quality, it's the best you can get. And when you're using it day in, this to me is just as important as, as a, a step-on tools would be to a mechanic. I use it all day long. I touch it hundreds of times a day and work with it. So this is something I've refined. Uh, it's, it's not something I've ever seen before. It's kind of my own thing, but it works flawlessly. But what it gives you, is it's a heavy duty slider mount that's mount, mounted to a, a boom arm with a counterbalance that's perfectly balanced for the light head. Now for the light head, this is an Amaran F22. It's a 12, 24 by 24 LED light panel. And it's on this gimbal, so it's perfectly balanced. I can move it up and down. I can put it oriented any way I want to. So if I want to sit down in the chair and I want low light, a light without shadows, you know, now I can aim this however, however I want. If I want this, if I want to have overhead light, I can do the same thing. It's tall enough where I can get it up and light something directly on a workspace, like I was sharpening chainsaws yesterday. I have this so I can see the glint. And having this on the, with the big batteries, so I don't have to deal with the cord anymore, has been a tremendous blessing. So this is my setup here that I use for making video content, but of course it's also going to be used, you know, instead of having have lights all over the shop, I would rather have an area light that I can just move around and focus on my work. And this is a great, great setup. It stores pretty small. You can tilt it up, push it up against the wall. And with the big batteries, it is, uh, it, it's, it's money. Here it is all put together. This is my take on the, the work triangle. As you can see, you know, from the perspective of where you're working, everything within reach, racing cart, parts, tools, everything, all your tools in one corner and multiple workbenches to work on, chairs, good lighting, and just an all around good environment. You even got a wood stove there. So it's not something that takes up a ton of space, really. I mean, my shop is 40 by 40. It's a good sized shop, but if you have a couple of bays in a garage, you can essentially do the same thing. Just 
when you're laying things out, just think about that work triangle and have uh, something that's efficient so that when you need something, it's only a step or two away. When I was putting together this bench, I, I, well, I wanted a drawer to keep my weapons. And this is a, I found this on the Snap-on site. It's, the, it's a drawer that's made to mount underneath their transmission teardown box. And I love it. It locks. And, and I really love it. I keep two things in here. I keep my, uh, my FUPA, keep my firearms here, and the sword, which is the word of God right here. All of my weapons, spiritual and physical, are kept in here. And if I step away for a moment, you know, I can lock this if need be. But it just keeps it off the clutter. You know, just makes it, it's close by, but I don't have to worry about it being open and, and you know, putting it, anyone running off with it. These are going to be more sh shop tools. Um, I keep my M18 or my M12 stuff in here, uh, electrical stuff, you know, that organizing you know more shop items um, and this right here oh, I'm embarrassed I don't even want to open this this is my junk drawer <laughs> this is the uh, this needs to be addressed I was looking at this today thinking this is a video alone I think I might do that for you guys let, let me know give me a thumbs up if you'd like to see that we'll pull everything out this is what I've accumulated over the last year I need to go through here and get rid of a lot of this stuff. But it just, I don't know, this is the junk drawer that I, um, I'm always getting in, into it. It's getting pretty heavy, too. It might be too heavy. So we'll, uh, let, let me know if you guys, let me know in the comments so we can go through that and get that sorted out and, and turn it into something that it was supposed to be. Well, this is my take on, the, on an efficient space on the work triangle. I have found it to be very helpful. It's uh, an, an inspiring place to work. It's a place that I want to be, and it's all about eliminating frustration. Life is hard, and working on this stuff sometimes is hard. And I'll tell you, having a space, make it as nice as you can. It makes a lot of difference. It, it takes uh, something that you dread and turns it into something that you can enjoy. I mean, who, who wouldn't enjoy working in such a nice space? I haven't always had this. You know, I always get, oh, it must be nice. You know, but you got to remember that I'm, I'm in my mid-50s. And I've had, always had shops, but my shops didn't, weren't always like this. This is something to, to work towards. And this, I'm not saying that I know everything. It's not the end all be all. Not, not at all. I, I'm learning from guys that really, really know. I just, I take and steal and I, and I, I like to research and I, I, I like to go to guys that have to work efficiently. And when I saw how the KTM team was setting up their shops, you know, it was very similar to this. There's everything is permanently mounted. Of course, you know, guys go show up to work and, you know, they don't have to be versatile. They don't have to be bringing skid steers into work in. So I wanted to have the same thing, but something that I could not lock. I didn't want to be locked into furniture and millwork. I wanted to be able to move things around and for it to be, to be, you know, flexible, a flexible space that did the same thing that they were achieving and this, this is what I came up with so hopefully this is helpful to you remember the best marriage advice that I could give you beloved is to have a shop have a shop have a place a refuge that you can get away from the grind of, of, of uh, husbandry uh, to where you can have your own time to, to think and to reflect and, and just get away from it for a little while it's not a place to run away from your family I'm not saying that but it's just it's your wife will enjoy having you out of the house as well I promise you so it's just it's a good it's a good thing to do is to have your own space I think I think it's it's critical I think it's one of I think it's the most important thing hope this helps may God bless you and your families please keep us in your prayers and we'll see you all on the next video